Hello, YouTubers. <laughs> well, we're, we're done for today. We had uh, just had some visitors. Yeah, it's done. We had uh, my cousin Marty and his dad show up. Never met. Well, I met his dad when I was about that big. <laughs> he said, "My gosh, he was so happy to see me." Last time I saw you, you were here. I said, "I'm after all a little bit since then. Maybe a little bit too much, but you know, it's still me." <laughs> and he used to always give me a, a chocolate bar when I was a little boy. And he brought me into two chocolate bars a day. So. And that's right. So great guy. Done. Great guy. When it went over my heart, give me a chocolate bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey? Um, couple of things. Okay, first of all, we have a new type of boot to try for the BX. Yeah. You can, they're in different colors. These are supposed to be very, very, very long-lasting boots. They're made by a special composite. Uh, they come in a variety of colors. I just choose some black and some yellow ones for now. That's not what this video is about, so we'll put that away. That's things to come. So, don't get mad. Then this showed up today. Yeah, so I'm surprised. What the heck? So anyway, I thought you ordered something you forgot. Yeah, or I thought I got the wrong thing that I ordered. Right? So I said, "Well, I must uh, must renounce." There's no way I can pronounce this man's last name because here in Newfoundland, there's not that many letters in the alphabet. <laughs> Paul and Kathy, my name is Greg, and I'm just going to say Burn. <laughs> Believe me, it's easier to do it. I'm from Canal, Ohio, Winchester, Ohio. I've been a long time subscriber of your channel and I have probably watched every one of your videos. My favorite hobby is metal fabrication and welding. I also own a Kubota tractor. He's a good guy. Yeah. That's, you know, he's, he's top notch. He's top shelf, isn't we're, he? We're off to a good start. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's, there's nothing bad about this letter so far. <laughs> it can only go up from there. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all of this is why I truly enjoy watching your videos. It is so nice to see that there are still people out there that are truly nice people and take pride in their work. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, if I could only train Kathy now to take a bit of pride, I'd be right up there. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I know how you like lights. So I thought I would send you one of my favorites that I use all the time. Well, he knows you quite well. Well, Craig, thank you very much, Craig. It's, it's, well, I'm telling you, he's paying attention because I have really... People think that like I like collecting Coca-Cola and gasoline memorabilia. Oh, there's a business card in there too. So Craig, we'll be in touch, buddy. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we collect a lot of stuff. But I, I think, somebody asked me if I didn't collect that stuff out there, what would you collect it? <laughs> I said, well, you could consider me a light collector, because I love lights, mm -hmm. and also a clock collector. Yeah. Like my biggest fear, the worst time of the year for me is when they change over this daylight savings time. Yeah, they really should do away with that. Like, like I, well, I gave up because I mean, there's 60 clocks, and you know what I'm like? I gotta have them all tuned, and they all gotta be synced, mm. and, you know. So, but anyway, so it's clocks and lights. So this is a very, very, very nice flashlight. This is by, uh, and it's made in the US. Look at that, it's LED too. Look at the batteries, never seen a battery like that around. Oh, they're uh, unique, huh? Unique is right. So that very, very lovely. nice. Thank you, Craig. Very nice of you, sir. Very nice. Really, really appreciate it. Now, we'll move on. That, that, was, that kind of made my day. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Because it's been a kind of a, a weird here, crazy day here. Keep that in here. Yeah, so now what we're gonna do is we had somebody ask us a question, and here is the question. Soon ever I can get back on this, this iPad. It's from uh, DJ Nightfall. <laughs> Being a new BX1870 owner, I have seen some YouTube videos on modifying the hydraulic pressure by adding shims to the rear of the tractor. Could you give us your input whether this is good or a bad idea? Thank you for the information. In fact, I have found uh, that one of the Zerk fittings under the mat was missing, that I was missing. Thanks to you for pointing out I was able to find it. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Well, that, that's not a problem. Yes, uh, 
I've watched a few videos where people are actually boosting their pressures on their hydraulic systems, especially on these, these BXs. And boy, you know, like how can I put this without hurting anybody's feelings? And I'm not, I'm, I know I'm going to be raked over the coals because no matter what I say, I, I usually get raked over the coals one way or the other. I always tend to seem to peeve somebody off. But I'm telling you folks, these things are, these tractors are set up in the factory to have a buffer zone. And the buffer zone is to not have them underpowered and not have them overpowered to the point where they can tear themselves up. Now I know there's going to be times that you're going to be sitting on your controls or your, your BX and you're going to say, oh gosh, if I only had that little bit more power, I could move that stump. So then you get on there and there's companies that sell the shin package with the gauges and you get back there and you start boosting your pressures and you know and, and you're convincing yourself that your tractor is performing better and stuff. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. I never, as much as people think that I did, I've never messed with the pressures of the hydraulic system. Because no matter how much pressure you put on it, you're never going to be satisfied. For one thing, the BX is small. Then if you've got the B with the backhoe, you're going to have situations where that's going to be small. If you've got the Grand L with a back one, there's going to be times it's going to be small. Look, I used to operate heavy equipment. I went from a 966 CAT to a 988. And I always said, boy, and I, no matter what I was on, I said, man, you know, if I only had a little bit more power, like I could move that 40-ton rock. <laughs> Right? Then I remember one time I got into a 992 and I mean I was loading the truck and then I said boy you know this is taking four or five dips you know if this bucket was a bit bigger I could do it in three dips. So no matter how big you go you, it's in an environment where everything else is around it is big so you automatically assume that it's, it's underrated or you know, yeah, it, it's yeah. not really keeping up with what else is around. So you, you get immune to it too, and you find out, well, you get used to the power if I had a bit more power. So basically, personally, and this is my own personal opinion, you can do a pressure test on your hydraulic system. You can do that. You, you should have a service manual and do the pressure test. And then like if it's overly under pressure, which I highly doubt it ever will be, then you can shim it. But I'll tell you folks, it's like a, it, it's, it's like a vehicle ramp. Like this vehicle ramp is rated at 10,000 pounds. So a guy comes in and I says, well how heavy is your truck with that fuel tank in the back and with the racks and the ramp and stuff on it? Well it's about 10,000 pounds. I'm not putting that on the ramp because it is not worth doing an oil change on a truck like that when I'm going to strain up the ramp or possibly kill myself. So in other words, Kubota decided they were going to just under pressurize, just come under the max with their pressures so they'll keep the tractor from tearing itself up. And I really think that if something is working well, leave it alone. Don't fix something that's not broke. That's my opinion. Sounds good to me. Yeah, so whether you like it or not. Now, fellas are going to say, well, I can get a lot more power out of it. And you can, you will get some more power out of it. But at what cost later on. Keep that in mind. Now, let's move on to part three of this video. Part three of this video is about the winds we've been getting. We've been getting a lot of northeasterly winds. And this time of the year, northeasterly winds is terrible here because there's a couple of things that happen. What happens is there's ice way out in the ocean, including icebergs. And the tides and the wind are taking them closer to Newfoundland. And in our case, where we live, on the Northeast Avalon, what happens is, is this ice starts to roll as it gets closer to shore, and it starts to break up. With the northeasterly winds, it starts to drive that ice in towards the land and onto the land in a lot of cases. And it starts to break up and it starts to build up and build up and we call it pack ice. Uh, 
you would not believe how much pack ice we have in our harbors now. There's a, a, uh, a ship, a ferry, there's ferries that go back and forth to different islands here. Icebreakers are coming in now. What takes, takes to be a 30 or 40 minute run now can take up to eight hours because you just can't get through the ice. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take our other camera now, the, the big one, and we're gonna go down and we're just gonna show you what an open harbor used to look like. And we're gonna show you pack ice. Because we have a lot of this, a lot of people that, that view us from South Africa, from New Zealand, from, from Florida, from all these warm climates that probably never ever saw pack ice. Because what's gonna happen now, one of those days we're gonna get a westerly wind, and it's how it goes. And it goes again. But that being said, even with all the wind that we've had here now, it's changed the direction of the icebergs. In a lot of cases, we've even had to evacuate or bring our oil rigs in inland to get clear of the ice. So that means this is probably going to be one of the best years in history for icebergs. So if anybody is ever thinking about coming to Newfoundland, now this is a pitch for Newfoundland, I will admit it, but if you like to see icebergs this is going to be the year to do it so check us out the other thing is too with this pack ice coming in the unfortunate part about it is it it traps whales it traps dolphins just off our coast here's a little island called bell island and they rescued what four or five dolphins the mm -hmm. other day they got them yeah. out of the ice and put them over in, into the uh, clear water and uh, you know, good-natured people to, to go through that trouble. You know, kudos to them, right? Yeah, because they had some open water to get them out. Yes. Unfortunately, yeah. the whale. The whale was perished. Young. Yeah, he was a young whale, and he, and he perished. There's no way to get him out or get to him. No, and you know, sometimes you're better off leaving, leaving, leaving them alone because you stress them out even more. The other sad part to all of this is you get people walking out on this pack ice. Mm -hmm. When you walk out on the pack ice you don't know it's like an iceberg you don't know how much is underwater it could be that thin and it could be that thick so you could step off this ice pan and get on that ice pan and flip over and you're gone down under yeah and you don't come back no you're swallowed up mm -hmm. the sad part about it because somebody was stupid enough to do this i won't say stupid enough i'll say silly enough yeah silly enough to do this now we have to risk the lives of our first responders to go out and search for the body. Because they never come back with a live person. No. Not you know. in that cold water. Yeah. It don't happen. And I mean, once you get swallowed up by this ice, you're done anyway. See, winds change fast too. So yes. So the, the ice drifts. It's and moving moves. and, yeah. you know. Sure, we've had polar bears coming on this ice. Yeah. Yeah, there's polar bears around now. So folks, if you ever find yourself in Newfoundland the next few days, don't go walking out on <laughs> on the ice. You're not going to stop it. People are curious. Yeah, people are curious. I know curiosity is mm -hmm. what you, you know. Risk it. My great aunt said curiosity killed the cat. Yeah. So it's killing people too. So what we'll do now is we'll head on out, we'll load up the van, and we'll uh, get some equipment on to go, and we'll go down and show you some pack ice. Okay, guys. It's real windy. We're here off Spaniards Bay Beach. Let's pan back a bit. see how much ice is actually out there. Windy. Okay guys, we're gonna go head over now and look at Bay Roberts Harbor.
Okay guys, we're in Bay Roberts Harbor now. We're actually on the Coley's Point side, which is a community just next door to Bay Roberts. So we'll pan around. Sometimes you'll even see seals on top of the ice. Of course, I don't know if we're going to see any today, but they are there. Get my lens cover from blowing around because it's still, it's still quite windy. That's Bay Roberts you're looking at over there, folks. We'll get some close-up shots now, very shortly. Let's pan in on that, uh, that little boat that's there. So he's pretty well socked in there till the ice moves out. You see that building there? The last time we had wind, it blew a lot of that building apart. You can see parts of it right by it. And that's a government wharf. This is where we get our salt. This is the salt shed here in Coley's Point. Holy smokes, it's windy. So I hope the dead cat's gonna straighten away that wind so you don't hear too much of it. Over there, that big blue building, that's called Moore Frost. That's where the big shrimp factory ships come in offloading their shrimp it's already processed and ready to go to market and then over here is the Bay Roberts Legion see if I can get you up close to that there it is there and that's the Bay Roberts Marina and of course uh, Everything is socked in there as well, so. Yeah. Of course, the disadvantage of having all this ice in here, even when it gets warm, this is like living in a freezer. Especially if the wind is right, it blows all the cold air in on the community. But we're tough. This is a way of life for us, so don't feel bad. It's a very unique place to live. So folks, I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to be able to do a drone flight, but it's too windy and it's not legal right now. I'd have to go somewhere else in the area to do it. So if I do get a chance and the ice is in, I will do a drone flight later on. So you guys take care. I hope you enjoyed the video.